This little guy has gotta be one of the most useful videographer tools or even content creator tools I have ever reviewed. Don't you agree? Yes, you agree. So what makes this guy such a unique, really cool piece of technology? Why this one specifically? First, the price at $329 for the kit or $279. This is a pretty amazing setup with some standout features for the price. And number two, for such a small gimbal, you have a variety of what you can use this with from your cell phone to action cameras like GoPros or Insta360 cameras to mirrorless cameras like this Canon 80D or my Sony a7S III. And number three, it has the ability to track you using this AI device separate from the camera or phone app or anything else that is so easy to use that we're gonna talk about later. Now, before we get too deep into this channel, I wanna thank you guys who are already subscribed to the channel and who always hit that like button for me. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you're at all entertained during this video. Now, let's start by going over some of the specs. It weighs 653 grams or 1.44 pounds. It is made of aircraft grade aluminum. It can hold up to one 1.2 kilograms or 2.65 pounds. It has a battery life of 17 hours if fully balanced, as well as a charge time of three hours. Now, if you get the full kit, here's what you get. You get this nice carrying case, and inside the case, you have a whole bunch of stuff. You have a manual that's actually incredibly good. You can learn everything you need to learn from this manual. It's made very well. You get a bag full of every type of connector you're gonna need to connect your phone or camera or whatever you're using to the gimbal so that the gimbal can control parts of your phone or camera. You have these nice little slots in here that you can put different parts that you're gonna use with your gimbal or your camera. For example, the pieces that connect the different types of cameras, like this is for the phone, as well as you have a large area here where the gimbal actually stays. Also in the kit is this detachable tripod, which is super handy if you're gonna be setting this down anywhere, as well as the camera connection bracket. Now let's take a look at the gimbal. Now I'm not gonna go into what all the buttons do and everything in this video because I just did that in detail on a previous video for a different model, but all the same buttons. So you can go and watch that if you want a more detailed deep dive, but I'll give you a quick overview here. On the right side of the gimbal, you have the power button, the USB-C charging port. You have the quarter inch UNC port where you can screw on attachments as well as a positioning hole. On the part of the gimbal facing you, you have the OLED display. Next, you have a mode button where you can switch between all the different modes for the gimbal. Right here, you have your joystick to control where the camera is looking and to create really nice smooth shots. And right here, you have your zoom lever. So if you're using the Hohem Joy app, you can zoom in and out on your phone or whatnot. And then in the center is the shutter button. Next, you have the multifunctional scroll wheel, which can control things like focus, going from blurred to focus, if you wanna have some kind of trick shots like that, some reveal photos. And you have a button here on the inside, which does different things depending on how many times you push it. And then you have your A, B motion buttons, which are used to do like a time lapse to set it at one point A, and make it go to point B. And the settings for those and how fast they move and all that can all be adjusted in the Hohem Joy app. On the other side of the joystick, you have your gimbal lock right here. So when that's up, this part of the gimbal will not be able to move, but you don't wanna turn those on when the gimbal is on. And then you have your trigger down here, which is very useful, especially when you double click it to bring the gimbal back to center. In the center here, you have your lock. This is what you're gonna use to actually balance out the gimbal. So you can pull that this way, it'll loosen up this arm here and you can slide it back and forth. And you have the same thing for this arm as well. You just loosen that and then this will slide back and forth to set your balance, which we'll talk about balancing in just a minute. Up top, you have another quarter inch threaded mount. On the back here, you have the power out. You can connect that to your camera or some other device to actually charge it from the gimbal while you're using it. And then right here, you have the connect camera button if you wanna actually control 
and plug it into the gimbal itself. So you can plug it from your phone or your camera right into the USB-C slot there, and that's how you get the gimbal to actually control the camera. And again, each of the arms have their own separate lock, so you can adjust the balance of each arm separately. On this side, you have your AI device, which we're gonna talk a lot about today. You can actually disconnect it from the gimbal itself. It's just magnetically stuck on there, and you can turn it on and off with a little switch. This also functions as a light, so if you wanna use it in like a darker setting where you want a little illumination on your face, maybe you're vlogging or something, you can press and hold the multifunctional wheel button and that will turn on. Now, all of the different sliding parts have a lock on it where you have to actually press this little tab to actually get it off. So if I wanted to remove the camera, it would be loose there, but I couldn't actually take it out, which prevents it from falling on accident if it, this ever got loose without first pressing this button. Now this piece right here is a mounting bracket that you put all your different cameras or phones on or whatever. And this piece is really great because it detaches and comes back and forth on there. You can also install it like this to make it a vertical. So if you want your camera to be in vertical mode, and again, press the button to release. It comes with a little magnet screwdriver here. So if you have to adjust it to fit on your camera, you can do that by using this right here. And again, it just stays right on there, magnetic. And that's pretty much what's on the gimbal. Now, I believe one of the greatest features of this specific gimbal is that it's designed and built to actually work with your phone, action cameras, and mirrorless cameras. It can't hold the heavy cameras with heavy lenses. For example, my A7S III with the Sony 24 to 70 lens weighs over the weight limit of 1.2 kilograms or 2.65 pounds. However, I don't really use zoom lenses on a gimbal anyway. So if I put my 35 millimeter lens on it, the A7S III easily fits into the weight limit. But you might be saying there's really good gimbals out there right now that can handle a mirrorless camera. Why would you spend money on this guy? Well, this is basically the industry standard. This is the DJI Ronin S2. This one can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. However, you gotta be able to handle it. It is very heavy compared to this other guy, the Hoham. And we're gonna talk about the difference between these two towards the end of this video and why I'll probably be spending most of my time with this one. Now let's start talking about balancing the gimbal. This part can be tricky and especially with heavier cameras, but I found this one to be extremely easy to do. I just followed the instructions in the manual that came with the gimbal and it only took a few minutes. Like I mentioned earlier, the gimbal has tabs that lock each of the arms so you can focus on balancing just one at a time. Using the gimbal is also very easy. The joystick is very smooth and does a great job taking the shake out of your shots. It is also very light coming in at 653 grams or just 1.44 pounds. So in the hours I used it with making this video on both my Canon 80D and my A7S III, I didn't have any arm fatigue. The gimbal also feathers your movements as well. So when you stop moving the gimbal or change directions, it will go a little bit past where you stop to make sure it's very smooth. Now there's so much to learn about actually using a gimbal that we'll go into that in another video if you guys want, but just know that this one, because of how light it is and how smooth it is and how absolutely silent it is, I was highly impressed. Now let's talk about my favorite part about this gimbal that I believe sets it apart from all the other gimbals out there. I've never reviewed or used any gimbal that has this feature in this simple of a way, and that is the ability to track over AI, but not just tracking AI like we see in almost all the gimbals using the app. All you have to do is walk up to your gimbal and without any fancy app or using any camera view or anything at all, just give the AI device the correct symbol and it starts tracking you. I was shocked at first just how smooth this actually went around following me. There was no jumping around, no quick movements. It wasn't choppy at all. For me, who is always showing parts of my car, it's like having your own private camera, man, just kind of keeping you in frame. Even when I was running behind my wife in the woods, all I had to do was keep up with her and the AI kept her in frame. It never once lost her. Now, I can make it lose it. If you walk behind too big of an object, it's going to lose you. But a lot of times, things like a small tree, it would lose me and then find me again. And to be honest, when I was testing against my DJI Ronin, I mean, it did the same thing. I can think of so many ways that this would help so many creators out there to be able to just set this up on a tripod, have the AI lock into you, and then you go about whatever you're doing in your video and not have to go back constantly to reframe yourself in. And it's different too. When you're making a video and the camera's following you as you're walking versus you just walking over in the frame, it makes it look next level. Now let's talk about the Hohem Joy app. There's a lot that the app can do, but I wanna talk about the ability to kinda of control it with your phone because I think that that really helps. On the top of the app, it shows you that you are connected into which gimbal, as well as the battery of your phone and the gimbal itself. If you click on the joystick, then very quickly you get to a spot where you can control the, the gimbal. So you can just kinda of put your thumb in the middle and you can see you can just move it 
back and forth like this, which is nice. And you can control the speed at which it does all these things in the adjustment section. But you can just imagine if you're trying to capture like a really nice landscape or maybe take a nice smooth shot about your of your car or whatever project you're working on, whatever type of social media you're doing. If you're gonna do this with your phone or you're gonna do this by holding your camera, there's gonna be a lot of shake in there, but there's gonna be none with this. So you get to see how smooth it is. The next option down is something called motion control. And that's where you can control how fast it does move and everything. There's little sliders on that. So you can adjust the speed in which it does this panning. And the very bottom, this enable force mobile, that's what you saw at the beginning of this video where you turn it on and it's gonna just basically follow your phone. This is more of a gimmicky fun thing that it does. Uh, DJI has this too. It's, you'd have to be really good at it to be able to do this smoothly. I think the joystick would probably be easier, but the idea is that you point your phone at whatever you wanna record and then it's going to, you know, record the same thing. You know, that's the idea of it. And it's pretty quick. I mean, you can see it does a really, really good job. So, I mean, I suppose if you got kind of some practice with this, it actually works really well. And I couldn't get it to like disconnect on me either. I mean, it was, <laughs> you can see it, it's, it's fast and it's good and it's silent the whole time. You're not gonna hear any um, any sound if you're recording straight onto the camera. I've also tested this with my DJI mics attached directly to the camera. They're on my Sony at the moment, but if I had it on here and it was recording me, you could easily attach the DJI mics on there. It'd be well within the, uh, the weight uh, limit. And then you could have it all just one setup. Now the last section is for time-lapse. So if we click on that, you're allowed to set up to five different checkpoints that it's gonna you know, move to. So let's just, let's just do a two here to show you how this works. So let's say I want to show a pan shot um, across my office here. So I can move it over to the left to start it, and then I can press the plus button, and there's the first point, and then I can move it, let's say I wanna go to the right, and then move it up to look up at something. Then I can add another plus sign there, and then all I have to do is hit start, and it's gonna go back to the very beginning of where I set it to, and it's gonna start this process now. And you can change how long you want this to take to go through it. I think it's set to go for one minute to get to the two different points that I had there. But you can make it go from up here to down here over and it will do that all within the time frame that you set. And then you can make your camera like maybe be in uh, you know, um, t uh, time lapse, can't think of the word, uh, time lapse mode. So be recording a time lapse while the gimbal is actually moving it, which just makes for some awesome B roll footage. And the app itself, it shows you where it's at in it so you know when you're about to hit the next checkpoint when it's going to be done. I feel like Hoham knocked it out of the park with these features and they just, they work really well. And also the app connects to the gimbal super easy. It was like super, very fast. I had to do nothing but open the app and as long as this was on, it just instantly connected to it. So here's the big question. Next time that I need to use a gimbal, maybe I'm recording a short story for a reel, maybe I'm recording some shots of some B-roll shots on a new product I'm reviewing, maybe some car shots for a video, whatever it is, am I gonna go and grab my Ronin or am I gonna grab the iSteady M2? Well, based upon my experience over the last week or so while testing this out, I would have to say probably 85% of the time, it's gonna be this guy, and here's why. It's just so light. I mean, I just, you can use this for hours without having any sort of issue. I mean, you're gonna be able to get any shots that you want with this thing without the fatigue of it, and it's just so much smaller. Portability is very simple with this guy. It doesn't fold up, obviously, because it's a mirrorless gimbal, but you could easily throw it in a backpack. Also, if I'm gonna go out there and record just a couple of stuff, maybe I'm showing some new uh, parts that we just reviewed and just put on the car, all I gotta do is take this guy out, grab it real quick, slip my camera on there, it's already gonna be balanced from last time I used it, set it on a tripod, give it the symbol, and next thing I know, I'm gonna be able to go and just start going and walking around that same side of my car, showing different parts of it, and the camera's gonna keep me in frame. Without having to go and set up my phone and setting up all the different syncing features and everything to get it set up on my other gimbals. And of course, one of the problems I didn't mention earlier is when you have to use a phone to actually track yourself without a device like the AI device on the iSteady M2, when you get a phone call or text or something like that, it just blows the whole thing up. Also, their mounting system just works really well. It's very quick. You can just quickly slide it out, flip it around, put it back in without having to remount your camera to anything. It's just, it's just simple. And the reason why so many things are purchased and left on shelves is because people are like, well, I don't have a lot of time. I just need to do a job really quick. I need efficiency. And that's what this offers. So let me know down in the comments what your favorite feature about this specific gimbal is. What do you like? What do you not like about it? What are some questions that you have? I'll try to do my best to answer them. And if you want more information about this specific gimbal, this was just released. So I'll put the information for this down below in the description. Check it out. That's going to be it for this one. I'll see you guys on the next one.